I have a program today for the beginner clockmaker. The clock collector that has a few clocks and he wants to service them himself with a minimum amount of tools and as least expense as possible. We're going to take this clock and we're going to disassemble it, clean it by hand, reassemble it and adjust it. Now you're going to need some basic tools to get started with. The first one is a mainspring winder. Which looks something like this. This is a very inexpensive tool. can be purchased from the material houses around the country. And there's a set of mainspring clamps you can use and later on I'll show you how to use a piece of wire if you don't have a clamp. And some letdown wrenches. They come in different sizes You can purchase them either in small sets or large sets. This happens to be a large set. And we're going to need a, a tweezer, which is quite a large, it's called a diamond tweezer. A set of movement stands. A nice pair of pliers. A scribing pencil, so you can scribe the wheels an oiler with clock oil in it and a, a loop for those of you that can't see too well and a hair dryer now the next thing we're going to need is a couple of canisters to hold our solutions in This is, this is just a water canister with a number one rinse in it, a number two water canister with number two rinse in it, and the third one is denatured alcohol. SOS pads or a Brillo pad, whichever you happen to have in the house. We're going to scrub these parts by hand. We're going to learn the nomenclature of the wheels and what their functions are and the best way to do it is to do each wheel individually by hand so you know what you're going to be doing. I won't get started on this. The reason why I chose a gingerbread clock is a lot of young collectors have one in their collection and it's very similar to any of the American mantle clocks. So once you learn the fundamentals, you'll be able to take care of quite a few of your clocks that you have in your collection. First thing we'll do is we'll take the pendulum off. Lift it off carefully, set it aside. There's a pin, there's a tapered pin in the hands. Take and pull the pin and take the hands off. good idea to put these all small parts in a, in a container. The hand just pulls off once you take the pin off. The hour hand is friction also. You can just pull it off like so. Now there's two screws in here holding the dial on. I'll take the two screws off and we'll remove the dial. Okay, I removed the two screws and we'll lift the dial off. And there's our movement inside. Now there's also four, four screws that hold the movement in. I'll take them off and we'll take the movement out. What I'll do here is I'll, I'll lay this down on his back like so. And we can take, I can take those screws out. Okay, I've removed the four screws and just lift the movement out of the case. We'll get rid of the case. We have our movement.
Now this is an Ansonia 8 day time and strike which is very similar to a lot of the American clocks that are in mantel clocks and schoolhouses and etc. And what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to disassemble this movement, show you how to do it with a lot of confidence and put it back together again. First thing we want to do is take the suspension spring off. It just lifts right off. It's on a little friction tight there. Take the suspension and pull it up through the crutch. You have to learn the nomenclature of these clock parts in order to service it. Know what the functions of the wheels are, know what the functions of the parts are. Once you learn that, you can you can fix about 99% of whatever clock comes your way. Okay, the first thing we want to do after you take your crutch off, put these movement stand legs on. These can be purchased through the material houses as well. They're available, they're not too expensive. And they make a nice stand for your for your movement. Like so. Now when we go to take it apart, we got something to work on. Now the first thing we have to do, we have to harness this mainspring power. Because it's very powerful and you can't get hurt if it's not harnessed correctly. What you do here is take your your letdown wrench, use it as a winder, wind that mainspring up. Get a little closer here for you. Wind that mainspring up so that we can get the clamp on it. Clamp slides in there. A little bit more. A little more. Get it wrapped around that spring like that. See that? Okay, once you have your clamp on, this is the click that you have to release. Put a little power onto the mainspring, take the tension off of that click, and with your screwdriver, take and push that click aside, and slowly let the spring come down. I have to keep bringing this back up again until we get it. I'm going to push this aside so that we can... Push that aside. I can hold this up and I'll let that spring come on down, like so. Let it down slowly, don't go down too quick, you're going to hurt yourself. Nice and slow until there's no more power left on it, like so. Now it's, it's nice and free, there's no power left at all. And we turn it around and we do the strike size, do the exact same thing on the strike size. We're going to do the same thing on the strike side. We're going to remove that click and let that spring come down. Bring the spring up a little bit. Let it come down slowly. Don't come down too quick. Try to keep your clamp in the center. So that when the spring comes out, it's not going to fly out of the clamp. Okay, now we have no power left on there at all. Everything is free. Okay, now inside the movement, we have two little springs we have to take out before we do anything. There's one 
up here and there's one on the bottom. I'll try to get in as close as I can to show you. With your tweezer, take a hold of the little hairspring and just release it. It's one on that side and then on the bottom there's one over here. Just take your tweezer and just push it off the frame, off to the side. Okay? Now we're ready to take the locking nuts off. Again, we're going to use our, our little bucket and we're going to put our, our parts in that. I'll loosen up the four nuts on the top plate. and we'll just unscrew them off. And I have one more. Take this one off. Now very carefully, just take and loosen your plate from the studs. Bring it up nice and careful, slowly. Seems to be a little power left on there yet. And let the plate off. One more. And the plate will come off like that. Now what you want to do here Try to make a sketch of what you're looking at. I have one already made up. I'll show you what it looks like. This way you get an idea of where the parts are going to go and what they're going to do. And then I'll show you a nice simple way of remembering where everything goes. Okay, what I've done here, I made up a sketch what I'm looking at on this movement. This is my time train. This is my center portion of the clock, the minute wheel, an hour wheel. And this is my striking train. Now I have a method that I teach for beginners which makes it kind of simple for them to reassemble a clock. A lot of people don't agree with it but it's a, it's a sure way of getting things back together where they were without making a mistake. What I do is I use a marking system. On my first wheel, which is on the time side, I'll put a, a horizontal line just with my, with my scribing pencil. You can use any pointed object made of steel or whatever. This, is, this happens to be a carbide pencil. I use that quite often. Make a little, very tiny scratch mark signifying number one on the rim of the wheel. When you come up to the second wheel, you put two little lines. Just barely enough to where you can detect them. Not that they're obvious to anybody that's looking at it. On the third wheel, I put three lines. On the fourth wheel, I put four little lines. And the escape wheel is a different wheel than all of these, so we know exactly where that one goes. The center wheel and the intermediate wheel are again different wheels. Then when I move over to the strike side, I'll put a horizontal or a vertical line on the spoke of the wheel. I'll put one, one line here. I'll put two lines here. I'll put three lines here and four lines here, signifying those four wheels. And the fly is a different wheel. 
Now this is called your great wheel, which is your first wheel. The second wheel is your count wheel. That's the one that does the counting for you when it does the strike. This is your cam and lock wheel. This is your warning wheel and your fly. And on the time side, again, we have the great wheel, the second wheel, the third wheel, the fourth wheel, and the escape wheel. This is the verge assembly, the hour hand and hour wheel, and the intermediate wheel for the minute wheel. And this is our, our striking hammer for our striking mechanism. So once you learn the names of these parts and you memorize them, you don't have to go to the marking system anymore because you'll, you'll recognize the wheel and you know exactly where it'll go. By doing so, learning the nomenclature and learning the functions of the wheels, that when you have to troubleshoot a job and something doesn't work the way it's supposed to work, you know exactly where to look. For instance, if the, if the time train has no power in it, we're going to look in the wheels and in the pinions and in the teeth to see if we have a bent tooth or a broken tooth, something that's jamming up that train for making it run. By the same token, on the strike side, if the strike keeps on continuing to run and doesn't shut itself off, then we know that our locking hammer is not in the right position, it's not in the cam, it's not in the locking wheel, and it doesn't come to rest at the stop pin. So we know where to look for these different problems. So learn the nomenclature, and as we go through the process of cleaning this, we're going to do that. We're going to learn the names of these wheels, so we don't have to mark them, either for our second or third time that we're going to do this. Okay, the first thing I'm going to take out is going to be my verge assembly. That's the one in the center, runs off the escape wheel. I'm just going to slide that out. That's the one that had the wire stuck to it. I'll put that aside. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the method I use in learning the nomenclature of this clock. Get back a little further here so you can see a little bit better. Okay. Now when we're taking out our wheels, you're going to have to take out the wheel that is closest to the top. So this, this second wheel seems to be pretty much in the way here. I'm going to take out my second wheel, whoops, my third wheel already came out, my fourth wheel, and my escape wheel. And I'm going to put them all on this side, and then I'll take out my hour wheel, and the hour tube, Just these come apart, and make sure that when you clean them, you clean them and you keep everything clean in there. My intermediate wheel, I'll take out my lifting lever, and I'll take out my count wheel, my cam, cam and lock and wheel, my warning wheel, and my fly. Now I'll, I'll lay these all out pretty much like they are here. I'll take out the hammer, and then I'll take out the mainspring. This is the strike mainspring. And the time mainspring. Okay, now we got this clock all apart, we're ready to clean it. 
and there's nothing left. As I can see, there's there's a lot of dirt in here. Look at that. Maybe that's why the clock wasn't running that good. Okay, we're going to start cleaning the clock, and we're going to clean it by hand. I got myself a little paper plate, my SOS pad with with moistened with water, and I'm going to clean all these these plates up. I'm going to scrub them by hand. This is the back plate, and then we'll do the front plate. Clean out all that, all the holes in there. Turn it over and get the back side of it. By doing this, we, we don't only clean up, but we do a little polishing at the same time. Which makes it kind of kind of nice once you get it finished. You got a nice looking shiny clock. Like so. And I'll take this and I'll put this in my in my number one rinse. And I will rinse it off. Get rid of all the soap. If you have access to a to a, a sink nearby, it's nice to run them under hot water to rinse them. Makes a makes a nice job. That's that's the first rinse, and I'll go into the second rinse, which will get rid of the, the rest of it. Put a little bit more water in there. It off nice. You can use a toothbrush as well, which I don't have right here. I might as well get one. Okay, just take a, an old toothbrush and just kind of wash them off a little bit. Get, get rid of all of that soap that you put on there. Rinse it off nice and well. That's the second rinse. Let it drip off a little bit, and then I'll go into the denatured alcohol. Just submerge that in there. Get all the water off that you can. Let it drip dry a little bit. And I'll set it on a paper towel with my hair dryer. I'll come along and I'll and I'll dry it off. Get rid of all the, all the water and all the alcohol to both sides. Okay. Nice and dry. And then we'll do the top plate. Do the top plate the same way. Now on the top plate, there's the cow wheel. Now, I normally don't take this off, but I'll take it off for you today. But what you should do is take a marker. Take your pencil and put a little X mark on the back of it so that you know that's the back side of it. Because if you put it in upside down, you're not going to get a count up on your strike, you're going to get a count down. You're going to go in reverse. And the way we do that is there's, there's a little spring clip here. Take the horseshoe clip, pull it off the side like that, and take the wheel off. We can, we can clean the wheel. This is our count wheel. Don't, for, don't forget to tell yourself what the names of the parts are. This is the count wheel. Gonna clean it up real good. One side. 
and we'll do the other side. I'll put it in my first wrench and I'll, and I'll brush it. I'll brush it with the toothbrush. I'll brush it off with the toothbrush. And I'll go into my second wrench. And then I'll go into my alcohol. Now this will take a little bit of time, so don't be impatient. Just take your dryer and dry it out. Okay. Now we'll do our plate. And then we're going to do all the wheels. And when you do the wheels, I want you to do the same thing as you did with the count wheel. Tell yourself what that part was that you just cleaned. Now there are machines to do this. You can buy all kinds of clean, cleaning equipment and it's, it's, some of it is quite expensive. This is a very inexpensive way of cleaning one or two clocks that you might have in your collection. Again we're going to and I'll wash it off with the toothbrush. Get rid of all the soap. And we'll go into our second wrench again. But you're not going to get all the soap off on just one wrench, so you have to go to have to go to two wrenches. And then we'll go to the alcohol. alcohol and we do our and we dry it off. Now you can buy you, you can buy cleaning machines, ultrasonic cleaners, etc. But they cost a lot of money if you're only going to do a couple of clocks. Now we're going to do each wheel. Now, like I showed you, tell you what to do. This is this is my count wheel. If I look at it, I've got a number two on it, signifying that it's the second wheel in the strike zone. And take and scrub it all down, nice and clean. A little bit of rust here, get rid of some of the rust on the shaft. Put it in my wrench. And I'm going to rinse it off. And then it'll go into the alcohol. On the same on the strike side, I'll take my cam wheel and I'll clean that and do the same thing. And then I'll also clean my warning and stop wheel. That's the one that has one pin in it. Do the same thing there. Clean it, put it in a, in a cleaner, and my fly. And we'll do that. Just scrub these real good. I'm, I'm only doing it quickly here so we can, we can get through and I can show you exactly what's going on with the rest of it. Then I'll go to the, to the time train. This is my first wheel. Take and clean that all off real nice and good. Get rid of the rust. Put it in the water. My third wheel. Scrub it real good. I'm only going quick now. Don't do it like I am. Scrub it real good. Polish it nice and clean. And my fourth and my fourth wheel. Scrub it good and clean. And clean in the fourth wheel. 
and my escape wheel. Now the escape wheel is a lot different than all the other wheels, so the teeth are different, so you know you don't really have to mark that one. And scrub it real good and make sure it goes into the cleaner. And I have my center shaft for my hour wheel. I take care, clean that up, clean up my hour wheel and hour pipe. Clean that all up real nice and clean. Put that in the water. And my intermediate wheel, clean that all up. Scrub everything real good and clean. Take and scrub the verge assembly. Scrub that all off nice and clean, get rid of everything. And my lifting levers, lifting and stop levers. Clean these all up nice and clean and clean them up. And my striking hammer. Clean that all up nice. Any rust on it can rub the rust right off and put it into the cleaner. Okay? Just call those names of the parts out to you as you keep doing it. And then you'll learn the nomenclature and you won't have to mark them anymore. Okay, now we're down to where we have to clean the mainsprings. You have to take the mainspring apart to clean it because through the years they get they get gummy with oil and if you don't get all the oil off and all the gum it's not going to function right. So with this little what they call a loop end mainspring winder they're very inexpensive you can get them through the dealers. I'll try to demonstrate it for you. You slip the loop onto the shaft the arbor comes through the hole and there's a clamp Put the clamp on. The clamp goes over the top of the wheel, locks that wheel against the frame, and then turn it tight like that. Now with your with your key or your letdown wrench, wind it up. And I'm gonna take that clamp off. Slide the clamp off. Remember that click that we that we opened up to take the clock apart with? Well it's still on that same wheel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna undo the click. And let that spring come down. Again, let it come down slowly. Don't let it go fast. Because it's gonna open right up on you. Let it come down nice and slow till it's all wound out. Very careful. Very careful until there's no power left on there. Now we have that spring all opened up. Take the clamp off. And we can take the spring out. We take the spring off the arbor. It's hooked on the arbor inside here with your wrench. Hold the spring and you can pull it out. Taking hold of the spring turn it in reverse fashion and you can pull that arbor off. Now remember which way the spring wound up. So that when you put it on, you don't put it on upside down. This one, this one wound up counterclockwise. So then when we put it back on, we put it on the same way. I know that the spring is wind, winding counterclockwise this way. And we're going to clean this wheel up, the, the great wheel on the strike side. And we'll put it with all the rest. Now the way I clean these mainsprings is I take, I take some of this denatured alcohol and I'll take my paper towel and I'll tear a piece off of it as such. 
I'll submerge it in the alcohol. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll sandwich the spring between it, and I'll come around and I'll just pull that spring on through until I get it all good and clean. I get all that old oil off of there. Come all the way out as far as you can to the end. What you have left in the middle, you, again, you can take your toothbrush with a little alcohol on it and, and swab it down like hell. Do this side and turn it over and do the other side. And you take a take a another dry piece of towel and just take and just dry it off the same in the same manner. Just pull it on through. And we oil it the same way. I'll take it up, put a little bit of oil on here, and I'll lace that through, and that'll be enough oil on that mainspring to keep it lubricated. Okay? Okay, now we're going to get to part two, and we're going to put this unit together. I already cleaned and oiled my mainsprings like I showed you. Put them in place. I'll put in my second wheel on the strike side. My third wheel. My fourth wheel and my escape wheel. Now if you didn't mark them and you want to know if you had the wheels in right, a good theory here is that the wheel and the pinion has to match. Wheel, pinion, wheel, pinion, wheel, pinion, wheel, pinion. If you put it upside down as such, then you have then you don't have a wheel and pinion match. So make sure that you put them in in the right manner. And if you mark them, like I told you in the beginning, all your markings should be looking straight up at you now. Your, your one, two, three, four, and your escape wheel. Now the next thing I'll put in will be my lifting lever. That goes in the center. Make sure that your your lifter is on the right side. Don't put it in the back of the lever, put it on the top. So that when this lever hand comes around, it'll pick that up and move it. Next I'll put in my center wheel. Put my intermediate wheel in first. Center wheel goes on top of it. Put in my intermediate wheel. My center wheel. And my hour wheel and hour pipe. Next I'll put in my second wheel on the strike side. Make sure you got wheels of pinion. Put in my cam wheel. This goes underneath this. Get my hands out of your way so you can see. Goes underneath that lever arm. Set up a second. Put it in the pivot hole. And you can line up. Here. You can line up a little bit too high here.
And when you put your cam wheel in, good practice to do here is make sure that your your stop lever and your cam it's, it's in the cavity of the cam. So then when you put your locking wheel on, your warning and locking wheel has two pins on it. One for warning, one for lock. Set that in underneath. Put it in the hole. And set this stop pin up against the stop lever, like so. And we'll put in the fly. That way we know we're in the, we're going to be in the right in the right position when we come to stop. I can slide I can slide the verge in once I get the piece on. Now I'll put my I'll put my hammer in. Hammer comes in inside goes on the top of this cam wheel where the two pins are that activates your hammer. It says it in the hole. Now we're ready to put our plate on. Got our, our parts all nice and clean. Now we can put it all back together again. I'll set this on. I'll put a couple nuts on here to hold that in place. And then I'll put all the pivots in the holes. See how we come out here. Put some pivots in the hull. Look for the pivot that's the longest. Because some are a little bit longer than others. See the one that's the one that's touching, and that's the one you can put into place. Okay, we've got the pivots all on the holes. And tighten down on our on our nuts. Now those two little springs that we had when we started, you got to put them back where they belong now. And get tweezer around. Get a hole over with your tweezer, bring it around, and lay it on the top of the plate. It locks. That gives you just that gives you your tension on your hammer. And then the other one that was on the top, that's for your lifting lever. So we'll put that one in the position. It's only a very small one. Okay. There we are. We got our movement all back together again. So what we'll do is we'll put a little, a little power to it, and we can check and see what we got. I won't take the clamps off until we make our adjustments, if we need to have, have to make any. Okay, we got power on the, on the escape wheel. Escape wheel is moving nicely. Back and forth. We got power there. Okay, and we'll tighten up the strike side. We've got power there. Now we'll see if we our train is running. Okay, we got a train working, but it isn't stopping. 
where it's supposed to stop in the low crevice. So what I have to do here is find out why it's not stopping. It's not locking, so I have to go to my locking wheel or my stop wheel. I'll let it come down to the to the low point like that. My cam lever is in the cam. My count lever is in the count wheel, but my stop pin is way over here where it should be up at the top. So what I'll do is I'll I'll let the power of the mainspring down and I'll move that wheel about a quarter of a turn. Okay, I'm going to let this power down so I can move that wheel without hurting anything. I can loosen up, I can loosen up the top knot. And then I'll move that wheel a quarter of a turn. I'll just spread the plate a little bit, disengage the wheel, and then turn it a quarter of a turn, like so. Put it back in the pivot hole. Let's get my hands out of your way. And then I can lock this play it again and we'll try it again okay I've loosened I've moved that wheel a quarter of a turn now we'll see what we have now I'll lift up that lever the half hour it stopped one two three o'clock it stopped 3.30. See? 4 o'clock and it stopped. So by learning the names of the wheels and the nomenclature of what they do in their functions, when you have a problem, you know where to look. We had, I had a problem here where the, the count wheel kept on going and it wouldn't stop because the stop lever was not against the stop pin. Although the, the, the lifting lever was into the cam of the cam wheel, but it was off here and it would stop. So now, now we know that everything's in the right position. Our, our clock is running. Now we're going to come to oil in it. Like I told you in past programs, don't over oil any of these clocks. There's too much oil creates too much dirt and you got all kinds of problems. What I'd like you to do is just this oil I get some focus here. There. I'm gonna I'm gonna put just a, a drop of oil on each one of these pivots, just half of the oil sink. I don't want the oil to run all down the plate. And now I'll do the other side. Okay, we're about ready to put this back into the case. So what I got to do is I could take a, a tissue and I'm going to take off some of my some of the fingerprints I left on here when I tried to hold the plates together. Fingerprint will leave a mark and eventually it'll turn black and it well your nice clean job won't look that clean anymore. Here's the front and I'll do the back plate. Any residue or okay I'll take off my my stand. I'll wind up my main springs and I'll take the clamps off. Wind them up all the way so you can get the clamp free. And then just lift it out. 
On the other side, we have the wire that I tell you we made up. Do the same thing to that. I'll unhook it. Straighten the wire out and I can take it out. It makes, it makes a nice clamp if you don't have the C clamps. And all it is is you just hook the two together like so. And it makes it makes a nice makes a nice spring tension. Now we'll put this back in the case. Okay, I'll put in I'll put in the four screws. Okay, I got the four screws in. Put the suspension spring in. Clock is running, running away before I can even get the pendulum on. Put it up in the in the channel. I'll put the pendulum on and we'll run the clock. That's an Ansonia eight day time and strike. And I showed you a nice simple procedure on how to clean your clock for your own personal use. Now this concludes the program on beginner clock repair. I hope I've been some inspiration to you and some courage to go ahead and attempt what we just did today. Now, until we meet again, may your clock keep on ticking forever. I want to thank you all for coming.